Today we are actually going to be discussing one of the models of argument. So, there are several different models of argument, as you will have seen from your class readings. So today we're going to be discussing the Tolman model of argument. Alright, so what makes Tolman just so very different from anyone else? You know, the classical model of argument, um, which we get from Aristotle, is based on the understanding of argument in ancient Greece. It was very straightforward. It was basically, go out, conquer your enemy, take no prisoners, okay? In the 20th century, uh, Carl Rogers, for, you know, the Rogerian model of argument, and Toulmin said, um, actually that's a little too simplistic. Life is more complicated than that. And we need to be considering, you know, gray spaces in our arguments. We need to be considering where we need to make space for other points of views and how we want to handle that as we prepare and launch our argument. So both of them set forward from completely different viewpoints how to make a more complex argument. Carl Rogers from the area of psychology and Tolman from the area of actual rhetoric. You know, he's a rhetorician. All right, or he was, he's passed away now. All right, so things about this model. There are some things that don't change. You know, you're still going to have a thesis no matter what. And his model, you're going to call this the claim. All right, so C. All right, what else though? Well, obviously you still have to have evidence and support. That's not going to change. So you know, you need your evidence. Nothing surprising yet. However, where he comes in and offers you new material is a concept of needing a warrant. And not only that, but you might very well need backing for your warrant. Alright, and several other things beside, but I want to focus here. Alright, so you know you have to have a thesis. There's a claim that you have to make and say, Alright, this is the best solution for this problem. This is what we need to do. That's not going to change no matter what model of argument you choose, period. Alright? You're always going to have to have evidence. And your evidence should always include whatever you've discovered, plus the usage of pathos, which you can also pronounce pathos, ethos and logos. None of that will change. So let's talk about the warrant. All right. One of the easiest ways to comprehend the warrant is to think of it as glue. This is the glue that is holding your argument together. In other words, if people do not accept your warrant, the glue that's holding your argument together, your whole argument fails. I'm going to give you an example now. For Americans, a very famous example. The Declaration of Independence. Alright, keep in mind that even though Thomas Jefferson and the other writers of the Declaration of Independence knew for a fact that they weren't going to succeed, you know, they still put together this beautiful argument. They sent it across the sea, the target audience was King George III and Parliament, and they're like, mm, we know you're not going to accept this, but we're still going to outline in explicit detail why we are doing this. And the reason why is because they knew other people in the world would end up reading it or hearing about it, including most especially France, whom the colonies wanted to help finance the war, and they did. Like, this worked, worked on France, didn't work on Britain. Okay, what is the warrant of the Declaration of Independence? In other words, to understand what a warrant is, what do you have to accept before the argument will succeed? He actually states his warrant explicitly in the text. He says, we hold these truths to be self-evident. And then he starts listing what he considers to be self-evident. He's like, this is God's creation. All men are created equal. 
and governments exist to help and support the people that they govern. Also a sticking point. So think about it. In order for the entire rest, because this is the beginning of the Declaration of Independence, in order for the entire rest of the Declaration of Independence to succeed as an argument, because he's going to move on to his evidence next, you have to accept this warrant. All men are equal, and you have to accept their claim about what the job of a government is. To ensure life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To protect its people, to support its people. If you do not accept these two things, the whole argument fails. Back in England, they weren't impressed. They're like, that's nice that you feel that way and all, but you're our colonies and you're not allowed to leave us. France went, we are totally on board. They were having a similar ideological revolution in their own country. They were completely on board with this. They jumped right in and went, we completely agree with your warrant. Accepting the warrant, they looked at the evidence and went, you know, this is a long list of all the grievances, all the things that the colonists said that Britain had done wrong. You wronged us. You know, you're putting soldiers in our home. We're having to take care of them. You know, we have taxation with, without representation. You know, and they listed all these different things that they considered the British government to be guilty of, and this is all the evidence or data. And the Tillman model they would also call this data or D. Here's your data. You know, and his claim, when he gets to it, is, so we have the right to leave, and we declare ourselves an independent nation. Because your government has done wrong. You have not treated us well. So, it's technically all there, it's just not there in the order that you would be writing your paper for this class. Not that you can't write your paper in that order, you can keep that in mind. But generally speaking, it helps students to list the claim first, he doesn't, and then the evidence. You can explicitly state your warrant, like Thomas Jefferson, or it can be implied, it can be under the surface of your text. I'll give you another example. Think about the warrant holding up any paper concerning the treatment of animals. So we're not going to experiment on animals anymore. This is unethical. Animals should have rights. Animals should be treated well. Think about what you need to believe about animals or what you would need to believe about the sanctity of life in order to accept this argument. Because if your whole response is, I don't care, the warrant fails. The glue that's holding the warrant together collapses, right? This is actually happening all the time. And then when people argue at cross purposes to each other, sometimes literally on purpose, because of the way they're trying to defeat each other, they are in fact ignoring each other's warrants. So how, how exactly are you supposed to use this in your paper? First of all, I just need you to think. I need you to think about what the foundation of your argument is. Because making the thesis or the claim is the same, the evidence or data is the same, so think to yourself, what is underneath my argument? And do I need to give it backing? The backing of the warrant. The backing of the warrant means stopping, which Thomas Jefferson did not do, and the other writers of the Declaration of Independence. Stop and go, okay, I need to spell out my warrant, and then I need to give evidence for my warrant. In other words, you can take the time to provide reasons why this is completely valid, and you just go down the list in the same way that you do for this thesis. And whether or not you have enough space to do this depends on, you know, what your professor said the length of your paper is, or if you're a scholarly writer, you know, if you're an actual researcher and you're publishing a scholarly work, you know, different journals will have length requirements for articles. So it depends on how much space you've been given to write, how much time you do or don't have to back the warrant. But, if you have the space, and you are concerned that the glue holding your argument is going to fail, I suggest you stop, bring it to the surface, be explicit about what this warrant is, and then give it some backing, so that people will accept what you have to say. So, this is a super quick, super brief overview of this model of argument. But I hope, in addition to your class reading, that it will help you make sense of what this model asks of you.